Aloha, folks, and welcome to this latest edition of Five Questions, appearing here on KHVH Radio, khvhradio.com, and, of course, on hawaiireporter.com. Be sure and log on every day. We are delighted to talk with uh, pollster and uh, all-around good guy, we can say with great certainty, Mr. John Zogby. John, aloha, and welcome to the program. Thank you. I like the good guy part. That's nice to hear. <laughs> well, we did enjoy your visit with us not too long ago, and any plans to come back out to Hawaii anytime soon? No, but my bags are packed, believe me. There we go. We're going to have to look at our uh, promotional department and scare up a budget or something. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we have five questions for you, John, and uh, let's start with number one. First of all, what is the science of polling, and why is it that you're considered to be one of the most accurate in the business? And on top of that, what's the relevancy of polling information to the general public? Well, first of all, the science of polling, it's based on what we call random probability sampling. You know, whatever you're polling, a state, a uh, uh, community, uh, a country, everybody has to have the same chance of being contacted as everybody else. There are some modifications to that, but the important thing is that it's random, uh, that you're not selecting out one group or another group or, or over-representing one group or, or another group. That, that's what's important, and that's what's essential to, to good sampling. In terms of the, the relevance of, of polling, um, I, I, there's so much in our lives that separate us, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's commuting to work or working in a cubby hole or coming back home to be alone or, or with our family. Uh, people essentially want to feel connected, want to have some sort of an idea of where their thoughts and feelings and values and opinions lie in terms of anybody and everybody else. I mean, one way is to go to the grocery store or to the beauty parlor and come back and say, well, you know, everybody hates President Obama, or everybody is for this and nobody likes that. But what polling offers us is some sort of grounding into where we really stand in terms of uh, the, you know, the rest of our community, the rest of our country. Why are we considered the best? Well, we uh, are among the best anyway. We, we poll elections. We do so much more than that. But polling elections is one way to measure our results against uh, an objective reality, how people actually voted. And I, I'm knocking on wood while I'm saying this, but over the last few decades, uh, we've done quite well in, in, uh, in terms of getting our results right, you know, within a percent, two mm-hmm. percent, even a tenth of a percent of actual voting uh, results. For our listeners' uh, information, I don't recall the exact year, but when you had polling information, showing that Mario Cuomo, then governor of New York, would in fact lose uh, to a heads-up with uh, then-President Bush. Uh, Many were speculating, John, that that was one of the reasons why Mario Cuomo bowed out of the race. That was uh, uh, actually, that was December of 1991, and Mm. our poll came out the day before he was supposed to take a short little shuttle from the state, uh, from the the, uh, capital of New York, Albany, to... Manchester, um, New Hampshire, to file for the Republican primary, and the plane stayed on the ground. And one, he cited as a factor the fact that there was a budget crisis, but others cited as a factor that he could lose his own state of New York against the incumbent president. Where's the best place to find you, John, online? Uh, Zogby.com. Very easy. You just plug that in, and then I also do a column weekly for Mm -hmm. Forbes magazine at Forbes.com, and one called the Obama Report Card on uh, U.S. News and World Report, usnews.com. You also have radio uh, experience. You were on satellite radio for a while, yeah? I I did. I had an an XM uh, satellite show back in the 2008 elections. It was an enormous amount of fun um, talking once a week of, uh, for an hour or so about uh, the presidential race. And, of course, that was one for the record books. We're talking with John Zogby, of course, and question number two and five questions, John. Uh, the debt debate in D.C. is dominating uh, all of our attention <clears throat> these days. Uh, from your polling information, what, uh, what's America's opinion on this? Well, there are the partisans, needless to say, you know, and... 
Uh, when Republicans say they're talking to the people, they are. They're talking to Republicans. And re Republicans are very intense in their desire to make serious budget cuts and at the same time to not increase or raise taxes in any way. Democrats say they're talking to the people, and of course they are. They're talking to Democrats in their own districts, and those Democrats are telling them that they're very worried about social services cuts, very worried about entitlements, uh, Social Security, um, and uh, union benefits, and, um, uh, and, and Medicare. Uh, at the same time, what, what's happening is that the, the critical mass is shifting towards uh, support, strong support for serious budget cuts, not in little pieces, but uh, is, uh, cutting as much fat from the budget as is possible to the tune of three and a half, four a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're also seeing the majority who are saying, but we know that we can't uh, just simply cut the budget. There has to be some revenue enhancement or tax increases as well. And so score one for the president on this one. Um, significant budget cuts, not um, not in small doses, and at the same time uh, 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 ending the, the Bush uh, tax cuts for uh, uh, those in the higher income brackets. And so when the president went on television um, last night, he pretty much went on with a suggestion that the, the uh, massive voters are on his side. Uh, and our numbers uh, showing that uh, as of right now, uh, I see that there was out of July 11th, uh, nine in ten voters say it is important for Congress and the president to reduce the nation's long-term debt. And the headline says majority wants cuts rather than new taxes. Has things changed since uh, that date? Yeah, actually they did. And just mm. in a, a poll that and today is um, the 26th, we just had a, a couple of days' worth of polling out um, uh, just yesterday and today, indicating that there has been a softening, a shift on the tax increase as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so they don't want middle-class tax cuts to end, but they do want what is considered to be uh, uh, tax cuts for wealthier Americans. They want those to, um, to, to be eliminated. So there has been some, yes, some change in public opinion over the last week or so. Talking with John Zogby, it's a pleasure to do so with five questions. Questions number three, John, this would have to be a reflection of sentiments regarding uh, the following. First of all, uh, the president, of course, with uh, polling information regarding his performance. Uh, secondly, the performance of Congress. And has there ever been polling information, or do you have information, regarding the public's perception of media at large? First of all, in terms of the president, in polling that just came out uh, yesterday, uh, late afternoon, president's job performance rating is at 45. So we saw him go as low as 38% favorable, uh, then to 41, 42. It's, it's up at around 45 right now, which is um, not as high as it had gotten under um, uh, uh, or after the killing of Osama bin Laden, but it is a bounce back for him. At the same time, in matchups against uh, possible Republican candidates, for the first time in a while, we see the president actually leading every uh, uh, potential Republic, every real uh, Republican candidate, and even uh, a not so real one, Chris Christie of New Jersey. So, presidents bounce back a little bit, but. 45% job performance rating is still not good. Uh, only 40% think that he, the president deserves to be reelected. In terms of Congress, it's not at a low point. Uh, Congress had reached 9% at one point mm -hmm. in my polling under, uh, those are the Democrats under Bush, and then the Republicans just recently under, uh, under Obama have reached 9%. Right now we have Congress at about 17, 18%. I guess you can argue uh, it, 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 their, their favorable rating has doubled, um, but uh, it's really not good at all. In terms of the media, you're seeing a number of things happening. You're seeing, first of all, the hyper-partisanship that dominates so much of American life, dominating the views on the media. Conservatives trusting Fox, 
uh, liberals trusting MSNBC or NBC News, uh, kind of a, a breakup, a shift that way. Uh, and at the same time, more and more people kind of eschewing traditional media in favor of uh, new media, uh, trusting more the Internet, uh, particularly blogs, for their information and their, quote, truth, unquote. Mm -hmm. uh, fascinating. Uh, and uh, you can log on to Zogby.com and uh, learn more details about the conversation we're having with John right now. I'd like to shift back over question number four, John, the 2012 presidential race. In regard to the uh, GOP contingent, what does the most current polling information tell you about uh, this pack of candidates? You're going to hear it first right here. We still have Michelle Bachman in a poll that we're releasing probably within the hour. Michelle Bachman re leading the Republican field, not by much, but she's still leading. She's, you know, at about 20 or 21 percent. Closely followed then uh, by Rick Perry of Texas and then Herman Cain as well. Herman Cain, another Tea Party favorite. So the three uh, Tea Party candidates kind of dominating the field, then followed by Mitt Romney and then the others kind of in, mm -hmm. in very low single digits. Who do Republicans feel will win the nomination? Um, by far and away, they feel Romney will win the nomination. But for now, he is not leading the Republican field. Uh, question number five, John. Thank you for that, by the way. I'd like to uh, get more of a generalized view of, uh, through your eyes, somewhat of a composite of America and American sentiments today. As you take a look across this wide swath of information that you glean, what's your take on America and Americans today? I think there's fear. There's anxiety, anxiety over the future. For the first time, serious erosion in the belief in the American dream. You know, I've pulled in the American dream through good times and, and through bad times, and there was always a solid sense that uh, dreams are about waking up and into the future, that the future would be good. It would be there for my kids. Uh, things would get better. You're seeing an erosion today. Um, I, through most of the polling I've done over two decades, upwards three out of four Americans believe that the American dream is possible for themselves, for the middle class. And our most recent polling, 50% believe that it is achievable by themselves or the middle class in general. That's a serious erosion in the belief in the American dream. And so there's anxiety over status. Um, will I lose my middle class? status, anxiety over a kids, will they be able to get a start in life, will their lives be as good or better than our lives right now, anxiety over uh, what happens after the next paycheck, will I lose my job, will I lose my benefits, will I be paying higher taxes, um, it's not a good time right now. Oh, uh, my goodness, um, and I understand that, and, and I, I get the same sense, I guess the Logical question would be just purely speculative, perhaps, but how does this turn around, John? We're in a period of, of creative destruction right now. It's a major period. Uh, uh, these are, it's a, a huge historical epic. You're seeing an old economy torn and shattered, an old system to support that economy to, uh, just tearing apart at the seams, it'll be replaced by something new, you know, a new economy, a new economy based on a number of things, you know, biotechnology, nanotechnology, a new economy based on the right brain and people's creativity. You'll see new flourishes in entrepreneurism. That'll be over the next few years, but right now we're in the middle of, uh, of a Category 5 hurricane. Mm. Uh, it'll get better when the hurricane ends, uh, but we're in the middle of it. Well, I can't uh, thank you enough, John, for taking the time to join us. Uh, we wish you and your family all the best, as always. Uh, be sure and remind us, where can we find you, and what else should we know about the latest with uh, Zogby? Well, Zogby.com is the best place to find me, and then at Amazon.com, John Zogby, my book, The Way Will Be, mm -hmm. uh, the Zogby Report on the Transformation of the American Dream. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you face-to-face -face in, in Honolulu again. We hope to do so. John, thanks so much for everything, and uh, take care. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.